And I want to welcome you to today's lesson, which is making super simple square pillows. I have two here. I have this very adorable square. It has a little flange on it. And I have a different fabric on the back. So that is one pillow. This here is a slightly larger pillow, has a flange, and I put the same fabric on the back. These are so simple to make and they're so much fun. You can make these pillows in 14 inch or 16 inch. Today I'm going to make a 14 inch pillow with a flange and I'm gonna need a yard and a quarter of fabric as well as a 14 inch pillow form. In addition to that, you're going to need a few things, some straight pins, some thread, of course, bobbin, sewing machine, your iron, all your basic sewing supplies. I like to use a point turner, which helps me poke the corners out real nice, so I have nice clean corners in my pillow. And I also like to use the 20 and a half inch square ruler. I find that's really helpful when I'm making these larger squares for my pillow. So those are the few things we're going to need. And now let's get started. On the front of the pillow, I've used two layers of fabric. You only see one, the others on the back, just so there's a little more to it. It helps the flange stand up nicer. And it also equals the back where we have a, an envelope finish and there's a little extra fabric back here. I like my front to be a similar weight to my back. So the first thing you're going to do is using a large square ruler, cut a 17 and a half inch square. Now I've left my fabric folded just as I purchased it on the bolt. I've cut a square and I also, because my fabric was still folded, I cut two squares. So they are currently back to back, wrong sides together. So you're looking at the pretty side on both sides and I've cut two squares. To make it easier, I'm gonna recommend pinning all the edges and then basting about a quarter inch away from the edge. That just helps as we're working with it, that it's now one unit instead of two separate pieces. Once you cut it, I recommend not moving it off the cutting table so none, nothing shifts around on you and all your edges stay nice. I put about five pins on each side and you may think that's overkill. I just felt that it really helped so nothing shifted and everything stayed, the, stayed together just as it should. So I'm gonna do that right now. I am shifting things around so you can really see what I'm doing. But I recommend at home, just turning your home mat or working around, the, walking around your table, whatever works. But the less you handle this, the less chance things have to shift on you. that's all done, I'm gonna to go to my sewing machine. I'm going to put on my quarter inch foot and use that quarter inch foot as a guide. And I'm going to lengthen my stitch to a basting stitch because this is just done to hold the layers together, not really for any purpose in construction. Now that I have my layers pinned together, I'm gonna to go ahead and I'm going to baste a quarter inch all the way around. I'm going to lengthen my stitch. And I am just going to sew. You can see it's going to go rather quick because I'm doing a longer stitch length. I am trying to be as accurate as I can with my quarter inch seam because I am going to use this seam line when I go to do the next portion of the pillow. Certain machines, like my Fob Quilt Expression 720, has the needle down with the pressure foot coming up feature. So you can see it hopped up a little. When I get to the edge, I think that's super neat because now I can just move my fabric around. I don't have to hit any buttons or move any levers. So that's a cool feature that I really like.
I've basted my two layers together and they won't come apart and they're gonna act as one unit from now going forward. The next thing we need to do is prepare the backing. With the remaining piece of your fabric, you're going to make sure that your selvages are nice and even all the way along the top. And if you need to press that nice and flat and give yourself a nice crease on the opposite end, go ahead and do that now. Then you're going to take your fabric that's nicely pressed, selvages at the top, fold down by your waist, and cut a 22 inch piece. It's okay if it's slightly larger because the excess will get trimmed off in the end, but cut yourself a 22 inch piece and then go ahead and cut either with a pair of scissors or your rotary cutter right down the fold. And that's giving us the two pieces of backing fabric for the envelope finish of your pillow back. Like I mentioned earlier, you can do the same fabric front and back, or you can do a different fabric front and back. The one that I made earlier has the black on the front and the white on the back with the envelope finish. The one I'm working on today is the opposite. It's going to have a white front with a black backing. And the only reason I did that was so it was easier for you to view as I'm working on the project. It's up to you what you wanna do at home. You can mix and match backings or you can keep it all the same. Here, I did the same. I have the front with the red truck and the back where we have the envelope finish. Now that your backing fabrics are cut into two pieces, you should have a piece 22 inches long. This is right where your fold was, it's been cut. The opposite side, there's a selvage and you can see that down here. And you should have a second piece that is identical. With your two pieces of fabric, they should currently measure 22 inches long as you cut it and about 21 inches depending on the width of the fabric when you started. You're gonna go ahead and fold this in half right now. I folded so my selvages are lined up and over here is my raw edge. And this equals about the 21 inches wide from our selvage to our fold. And it should be about 11 inches the other direction because it was 22 when you cut it. Now that I folded and it's 22 by 11, I have all my selvages here. I have my folded where the fold was and I cut on the opposite side. I'm going to go ahead and put a nice crease in this. Just going to use my hot iron and crease all the way down that 22 inches. This will be one half of your backing. Set this aside and do the same thing with the other piece. And I have already done that. I have my selvage right here and I have the fold already pressed in. You're going to do that with both pieces and those are gonna become your two backing fabrics. That is it for the cutting and prepping of this pillow. This really is a super simple project. We're almost done. Now you're going to take your two backing fabrics and I want you to butt up the folded edges. So I have my two folds right here and you're going to do a three inch overlap. You can see if I count down one, two, three inches, I'm gonna pull this fabric down there. One, two, three inches. Go ahead and make sure that's straight. I use the lines on my mat. I make sure I'm straight here. And when I pull this down, I'm lined up three inches away here. I make sure at the other end, I'm lined up three inches away there. That three inch overlap gives us enough of an overlap that you don't see the pillow when you stuff it inside, but it's also not too much of an overlap that you have a real hard time maneuvering to get that pillow inside. So three inches seems to be the magic number for this type of pillow. Now that you have your three inch overlap, I don't want that to get messed up or shifted or moved around. So what I'd like you to do now is just put a pin right at the bottom where they overlap and right at the top here where they overlap and do that on both ends. Now, if we have to move this around at all, it's not going to shift and it's all pinned where we need it to be pinned. The final step is placing our pillow top right on the top here. 
you can see I have extra fabric on the two sides and up at the top and let me slide this and you can see that there's also some extra on the bottom. That's perfect. But before I move on, I like to measure that this is the same distance as this. That way I know my seam will be straight across the back of the pillow and it won't be cockeyed. It'll be nice and straight. I have my big square out and I'm measuring from where this fold is down and it, my pillow is seven inches, my pillow top. I'm gonna come over to the other side and measure and my pillow is seven inches from there as well. Once you have it nice and straight, you're going to pin all the way around. Just like I did before, I'm gonna put five pins in each side. I like one in the center, one fairly close to the bottom and one fairly close to the top edge and then one in between. Again, if I were home, I'd be walking all the way around the table if I was, but for today, I'm going to just turn this right here, make sure everything is nice and smooth and continue pinning. This is all ready to be sewn together now. I'm ready to begin sewing, but before I start, I have to make sure I go back to a standard stitch length on my sewing machine. I'm going to use a 2.5. And I want to start sewing in the hardest part to sew. And that hardest part is where this back fabric wants to fold down on you. And, and it's not that it's hard, it's just something you have to remember. So I'm going to start there it's fresh on my mind that I make sure everything is nice and smooth. I'm going to lower my foot and you need to do a half an inch seam allowance now. Half inch is a little tricky because you can't use the numbers on your uh, stitch plate of your sewing machine. So what I did is I sewed a quarter inch seam allowance on my basting stitch. And now I'm going to sew a quarter inch in from there. So you can see my quarter inch foot is lined up with that first stitching line. At the beginning, I am going to do a back stitch so nothing pulls out on me. I'm also going to do another back stitch right here, just a couple stitches where this seam, where this envelope pillow is, because I don't want that to cause me any grief later on. I don't want that tearing. I'm going to do an, another back stitch in the corner. And then I'm going to continue all the way around. back to the beginning, I will do a back stitch there as well. And there it is. My pillow is almost done. We are going to remove the pins, the last few pins that we're holding the edges in, and we're going to do a little trimming. I'm going to remove the pins that were holding the two backing pieces together, and now I'm going to trim even with the pillow top. And I'm going to do that on all four sides.
Now the pillow back is trimmed with the pillow front, but before I turn it, I wanna take a little bulk out of each corner so my pillow points are really nice. All I'm going to do is use a rotary cutter. You can use scissors if you prefer. We're going to cut out the corner. The basting line will get cut. Make sure you do not trim that center, that inner line, which is your real stitching line that's holding it all together. Cut off the corner. And we're also then going to just gradually cut a little away on each side. We're going to turn and do the same thing. Cut off part of the corner, but not the stitching line, and then gradually cut a little away. Now that all four corners are trimmed, we're gonna go ahead and just do a quick press with the iron to make sure everything is nice and smooth, the seams are set before we turn the pillow. First, set the seams all the way around. Once that is done, we're going to do one more bit of pressing and we are going to take the front fabric, in this case, the white, pull it forward, opening the seam essentially, and pressing. This will help as we turn to make it a little easier to do the next step of pressing. You can see here, it's just pressed open. Go ahead and do that on all four sides. Once your pillow is all trimmed and pressed, and then pressed with the seam open here from the top to the back, you're now ready to turn it right side out. You are simply going to put your hand inside and turn it right side out. I like to get all the way into the corner and use my fingers to kind of turn this. So I stick a, my thumb is inside, my fingers here. I'm going to poke out as best I can, but then I'm going to take my point turner and come in and really poke that out nice. And I'm gonna do that on all four corners. If you were making a plain square pillow, you would be done. But we are going to do a little pressing and then mark a line and create a little flange just to make it a little more decorative. With everything smooth on your ironing board, you want to go ahead and make sure you press so that the black and white fabrics meet at the edge versus how I have it pressed right now or the opposite so there's white showing on the back. You also don't wanna have it so there's a big gap in here pressed in. You really wanna get this edge pulled right out to the edge. If you wanna take your point turner inside and go in and just kind of smooth along, sometimes that helps a little bit. I did not do that today. I'm just going to kind of get it smooth with my fingers and then give it a little press. This is one of the most time consuming, tedious parts. But I think that flange is really worth it in the end.
that everything is pressed, we're going to mark some lines to create our flange, and then we're going to pin it and sew it, and we'll be all set. For this size pillow, we're going to create a one and a quarter inch flange. Using a removable fabric marker, you're going to put the one and a quarter inch line along the edge of your pillow and mark a line. I am using the friction pens and this will come out with heat. So when I, after I'm done, I'm gonna go over it with the iron and the line will remove. You may wanna pre-test this prior to using it, but it does work on most printed fabrics. And you can see I have a line right there. We're going to just put a couple pins in so things don't shift. And then we're gonna go around and do the same thing on all four sides. You may have noticed that I placed my cutting mat underneath while I'm doing this. It isn't necessary because I'm not doing any cutting, but I'm working on my nice horn cabinet here, or some of you may be working on your kitchen or dining room table. You don't want these pins going in and damaging your the finish on your furniture. So I always work with my mat underneath me. begin to sew, I like to look at where this opening is, where the pillow is going to go in. And I like to put a pin in here to remind me to pay attention. So when as, as I'm sewing, this doesn't fold down on me. I know it's a little hard to see, but you don't want this to fold down as you're sewing your flange. So I have one here and I'm going to go to the opposite side. I've got my opening here and I'm going to put a pin there again, just as a reminder. Now you're going to go to your sewing machine and go all the way around the square. You're not gonna go all the way to the edges, just make a square in the center where your, where your, intersect, your, where your lines intersect, just make the turn. I am going to make a few changes to my machine and the settings before I begin to sew. I'm going to remove my quarter inch foot because it makes it a little hard to see if I'm sewing on a line. So I'm going to pop my foot off and I'm gonna slide on an open foot. This is an open toe or in the fat feet, it is called the sewing star's foot, but it's all open. There is no plastic inside here. That allows me to really see that purple line I drew. I am also going to go into my machine and change to a triple stitch. Now a triple stitch will come down, back, down, and it will go over everything and make it a little more secure, a little more substantial. We don't want that to rip. Just like I did before, I'm going to start where that pillow fold is, where my overlap is. I'm going to lower my foot. I can very easily see my needle and my purple line. I'm just going to begin to sew. This machine defaults to a 4.0 length, and I think that works great for doing the flange here. I'm gonna leave it just on the 4.0. And if you notice, the stitch is going back and forth and creating a little bit heavier of a stitch. There it is, we are all finished. I'm gonna do a quick press with the iron to get any of those friction marker lines off. They remove with heat. And then we're going to put our pillow in. If you enjoyed today's lesson, you enjoyed making this super simple square pillow, please subscribe to our YouTube channels for more fun, quick projects. We were able to stuff our pillow through that three inch 
overlap we left, that opening. And then once it's all done, we're just gonna kind of pat it on the table. And that really helps fill the corners of your pillow. And there you have it, a super simple, quick flanged pillow. Thanks so much for watching and I hope we see you again soon. Bye-bye.